We have more coffee. One thing that happened is there is a hardware product out there called the FunCube dongle um, that originated in the amateur radio world. Um, it is uh, a, the driver software to allow it to be used with GUNI Radio is now packaged within GUNI Radio. Um, it is a narrow band receiver only um, chipset that works over USB. It's got a fairly wide tuning range, uh, but of course, to receive signals, it has to fit within about 80 kilohertz, which is the passband of this uh, receiver. Now there's a huge number of narrowband signals below a gigahertz. All the public safety, all of the uh, land mobile radio, um, there's a, most of the FCC channel, uh, channel allocations below a gigahertz uh, are narrowband, 12, 25 kilohertz or lower. So using a device like this um, is a great way to experiment with uh, learning GNU radio and doing narrowband demodulation. Uh, and this is something that um, I don't know if there's been any announcements from uh, Howard on this, uh, but we thought it'd be easier to have it inside GNU Radio rather than having to get two different sources of, uh, of software. How many people have played with this? Wow, great. Did they talk about this at all at DCC? Yeah, I it up. What's that? I brought you brought it up? It up? Yeah. A bit of work with it live. Oh, really? Okay, great. Yeah, one of these days we'll do like a complete noise figure and frequency stability analysis on it and, and actually characterize it the way, uh, you know, we would any other piece of RF equipment. Um, but I don't ha I have one, I don't have a great deal of experience with it other than using it to test the, the FCD software in GNU Radio. This was probably the biggest deal that happened for GNU Radio in the last year. One of the Video for Linux uh, kernel developers, um, not even going to try to pronounce the name, discovered that the common chipset that is used in these um, DVB receiver devices has a mode where rather than doing the uh, DVB demod on the chip, it will instead forward IQ data directly over the USB, which is exactly what GNU Radio wants. And so with this device, you could now get a not so great ADC uh, in practice, a little over a mega sample per second, so about a megahertz of bandwidth, uh, and again, 64 to 1700 megahertz tuning range. And these run anywhere from $10 to $30 if you can find them. Uh, now, it's a, I believe it's a European standard in terms of the chipset, so they're mostly available outside the US. Um, I couldn't locate this anywhere internally. But, uh, you know, of course, online you can buy them. When this was, uh, when this happened, the Osmocom SDR project added support for it. Actually, I think there was two different uh, implementations of support for it in GNU Radio. But all of a sudden, for 20 or 30 bucks, you could plug this into your computer, hook an antenna to it, use GNU Radio and actually a bunch of other software as well, but in our case, GNU Radio, and experiment with software-defined radio uh, at an extremely low cost. And yeah, it's, again, it's only an 8-bit ADC. The frequency stability is all over the place. Um, the noise figure isn't so good, um, but for $20, I'm, you're not going to complain. Uh, and it, it sort of opened the door, you know, this hit slash dot, it hit a bunch of places where GNU Radio wouldn't normally be talked about. Um, and it, it really, we saw the increase in users on the mailing list, we saw the increase in users on our downloads, um, and it was, a, it was a big deal for something like this to become available. How many, how many of you have played with the uh, RTL dongles? Yeah, so even more than the, uh, the FunCube dongle. Um, now, it's, it's kind of sad that this was a byproduct of finding a backdoor. Because we don't know if the chipset manufacturer is ever going to continue that backdoor. It's undocumented. And, you know, hopefully they realize that the big spike in sales that they saw on these was due to it being used as an SDR instead of as a DVB receiver. But it also could mean that they close that back door, build one of these, and say it's the SDR version for $100. So we don't know what's going to happen with this. But for now, you know, these are um, fairly easy to get, very useful. And um, they sort of do an intro job of, uh, of uh, giving you access to uh, GNU Radio. Have you done any? Yeah, yeah you're yeah, present. You brought yours, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if we can, 
uh, on, uh, during the Hackfest or maybe even uh, on Wednesday, we can put these up uh, and uh, see what they do. Uh, you guys can see that. Now, the vast majority of GNU Radio users that are using GNU Radio with hardware are, of course, using it with the Edis Research USRP system. The USRP was something that was designed to be you know, the best possible SDR for use with GNU Radio back in the day. And of course, it's now used with a lot of other software besides GNU Radio. But there's a reason why um, this has become the most popular hardware device to use with the GNU Radio software stack. And that's because it supports an extremely wide range of applications by giving you access to up to 6 gigahertz in frequency and up to 50 megahertz in bandwidth, depending on your configuration. So a GNU Radio USRP system will allow you to access a swath of bandwidth, convert it into samples, get it into a host, and do something with GNU Radio. Um, now, there are many applications for which 50 megahertz wide is like a narrowband carrier. Um, and there are many applications where you don't need 50 megahertz, you need 50 kilohertz. But the flexibility of the system has supported doing um, an enormous amount of research, of product prototyping, um, of uh, uh, end user products that are based around this, uh, as well as uh, what I call you know, Guinea Radio as a service but building a business around data that is uh, created by a system that uses a USRP. Um, there's also many features on this uh, for doing uh, more advanced RF research, uh, such as you know, MIMO-based uh, you know, multi-USRP synchronization. Uh, the um, daughter boards have uh, a variety of uh, different frequency ranges. Some of them are wide bands, some of them are fairly narrow bands, single ISM bands. Uh, I'm not trying to be a commercial for <laughs> Edis Research, but it is kind of obvious that most of us are here using GNU Radio using this product. And, um, you know, there's very solid reasons for that. Uh, if Matt wants to talk later, he can talk about what's coming down the road for this. But uh, um, for now, just the fact that, you know, there's a high speed gigabit Ethernet interface between a device and a PC and the, the device can down convert um, up to 50 megahertz of RF bandwidth uh, to a PC. Th those two features right there put it a class ahead of any of the smaller SDRs that uh, I've talked about so far. Uh, this is kind of an important thing to, to understand. If you're new to GNU Radio, if you're new to the software defined radio, um, this is really the, um, the power of a combination of hardware and software. Uh, every, almost everything, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, most of the stuff you'll hear about at the rest of the conference is going to be based around a PC connected to a USERF with some external electronics. Uh, any questions on this? There's a prize for the first question of the day. There you go, Ben. <laughs> uh, well, you can talk to Matt about one of these. How's that? Um, what was the prize? <laughs> we'll give you one free Git checkout. How's that? <laughs> Just do it from a country, not on that list. Um, I don't know if Matt's sitting here or not. Um, are, are you going to say anything in the next four days about these? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll give you your own time to do that. but. Uh, if, if any questions on these really should be addressed to Edis and, and not to me. Using this kind of system, whether it's a USERP or some other SDR, um, but typically a USERP, I've seen in the professional work that we do uh, with this type of system, it breaking down into four different um, uh, sort of categories of usage. Uh, it's certainly possible to do fundamental basic research 
uh, on RF systems and modulation techniques. Uh, and we'll see some of that uh, in the application section this afternoon um, using GNU Radio and EOSRP. More commonly, at least in, in my line of work, is using GNU Radio and EOSRP to prototype something that you're then going to build from scratch. If you were to build it from scratch, it'd take you a long time. But if you could sort of get things right first in a software radio environment, then you can reduce it to you know, low cost, low power kind of thing. And, and, the, and the combined total of doing those is less time than um, it takes uh, to start from scratch. A lot of field deployments, uh, if they're in environments where you, know, you can have the power and the heat um, and the EMI uh, uh, susceptibility, if you will, um, that the USRP has, not to say that it's overly susceptible, but if, if those environments are okay for you, you can deploy USERPs as is uh, for a variety of applications as well. So we've, we've done that, we've, we've built um, um, space to ground, um, ground stations. Um, that have been out in the field for use with off-the-shelf um, USRPs and, and PCs. You can also build a business around using USRPs to create data, and I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit, about a new, a new one that we got involved with er, uh, earlier this year. Um, last year I talked about the Path Intelligence application where they are using USRPs to um, instrument a volume of space and look at the GSM uh, uplink bursts that are created by mobile phones of people walking through that volume uh, and are able to um, correlate and obtain location of the phones uh, and, and look at you know, unique identities. Um, the, the way they're making money with it is to do that at shopping malls and tell the owners of the malls various information about which stores people go to on what days and things like that. So I talked about that in, in detail last year and that is an example of the, the GNU Radio and the USRP are doing something where the end user isn't paying for the RF stuff, they're paying for the data that comes out of the system. In terms of prototyping for custom RF design, uh, we've gotten involved in uh, several projects um, in the last couple years like this, where we will start out using a USRP and some external electronics and write a GNU radio app to do everything. Now it might be extremely CPU intensive, um, but you know whether it's a custom uh, RF waveform that we're uh, prototyping and testing or uh, it's something that they just want to have done quickly, the fastest way to get there is to write a GNU radio app to do it. The next step in this process has been instead of a very large system that uses a lot of CPU, it's possible to take portions of the waveform processing and move them into the FPGA that's on board the USRP. And I didn't talk about that in this other diagram, but the bandwidth of the signal that's actually present digitally at the FPGA pins, um, it's somewhat limited by the aliasing filters on the daughter board that you're using but that can be up to about 80 megahertz. So if you can implement your waveform in FPGA processing, and there's intentionally additional space uh, on the FPGA for that, then you can actually do uh, wideband communications. And we've implemented uh, Chirp Radar using this. Um, we've implemented a uh, uh, ranging system between USERPs doing this, using the whole bandwidth that's available on the system. Uh, rather than being limited by the transport. Because once you get over here, the uh, USB or gigabit ethernet transports limit you to a narrower amount because you just don't have the, the size of pipe needed to get all the data from here to there. So a sort of evolutionary step in this design would be to move the waveform processing into the FPGA or if your application needs custom RF electronics that you want to test out. You can build a custom RF front end for your daughter board or uh, an entirely new daughter board design. And then what's running here is a very small shell of an application that's actually just talking and controlling what's happening on the FPGA. Once this is um, just a minimal application, you can move to the embedded version of the USRP 
that has the ARM OMAP processor on it. And now you've got a standalone device that can implement everything that you want to do without having to lug around a huge PC. And at that point, you know everything's working, so you can go off and build a board that just does what you need. Uh, and this, this design flow is something we've been involved with uh, in several projects. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great way, uh, instead of starting with a custom design from scratch and then you know, spinning your board three or four times, you can have a much more assurance that what you're designing and building in hardware is going to work by prototyping it initially this way. Now, uh, you're going to hear a lot of presentations later um, about using uh, GNU Radio and USERPs in a research environment. Um, but I like to show this because it's an example where signal processing, or excuse me, software-defined radio and USRPs have sort of created an opportunity to get into this at a much lower cost, and, and certainly uh, perhaps a smaller time to market. <laughs> 